Mitchell, would you hit the lock again for us, buddy? Muy caliente. Burn la culo on la cara. We are going to my buddy BJ Baldwin's um, race shop. He, uh, he's the guy who gave me a bunch of insight before we did the mint. And we're doing this U UTV World Championship coming up. Just gonna talk to him. Pick his brain a little bit about racing, navigating, driving, Proceed what we need to do. Um, at the stop sign. Turn left onto West just bullshit Park with Lane. him. See his race shop. Thanks, Siri. You're the best. Could you imagine what the world was like without Siri? You have to bring an Alice out, try and figure out how you're going to make it. It was hell. So much of your track in my camera. Like trying to, your track, like the dust and everything. Try to turn buttons and all, and it's just like, nope. So, like I was saying, with having structural rigidity in the chassis, so that everything can work like it's supposed to, it's just like the bones in your body, right? Right. If if uh, if somebody's rotating on an arm bar by some fucking miracle, they get you in that position, and your muscular structure outweighs the structure of your frame, you're gonna right. snap your arm. Right. Like remember Frank Mir versus uh, Silva. Right. right. Popped his arm right here. Should have never broke right here. Same thing goes with the structural integrity specifically with uh, any off-road racing vehicle, especially long distance endurance races, because this thing's got to run for 20 hours on the chip, uh, you know, on the, over the most brutal surface in the planet, right. you know, Baja. But it's constantly trying to fold the front tire on top of the rear tire because it's receiving so much energy and so many different impacts, you know, seven or, eight impacts of bumps that are three and four feet tall a second at 110, 115 That's so insane. So the byproduct of the strength is trying to get the chassis to stay rigid and allow the suspension to do the work that it's designed to do, allow the shocks to uh, dampen and stabilize the chassis of the vehicle so that the, the wheels and tires can fall to the ground. It can get traction, it can uh, accelerate, decelerate, it can direction properly without breaking the whole thing in half. Right. And how important that guy, your navigator, is for the race. He said, my job is to just run as fast as you can and his job is to keep me under control. Yeah, for sure. A lot, a lot of guys, a lot of guys, it's like that. Um, yeah, a lot of guys, a lot of drivers, I'm not like this, but a lot of other guys, this, this guy is not only the navigator, he's like a fucking therapist, a life coach, and all wild stuff happens in here to where you're, like a driver will get really excited, really anxious, or really fucking angry. And it's this guy's job to make sure they're not upside down on fire in the next five minutes. You know, yeah. calm that guy down, bring the pace down, get him to be more efficient as it relates to his driving. How do you know where to make up the time? It's his job, like, all right, we can push it here. But wouldn't it be uh, his job to say you could push it here anyways? Uh, well, it's, it's a mutual decision, like, uh, I don't lean on the navigator uh, as much as other drivers have in the past, right. or, or other driver, other drivers do, you know, in today's climate of of, uh, of motorsports. Um, I've got so much experience. You know, I've been in this game for two, you know two decades, yeah. and I know the area really well. You're I the know. Driving game, like I am the fighting game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I I know I know it really well. I know the course really well. I know what I'm capable of and how to operate within those limitations without harming the vehicle or wearing the tire down. You know, if I'm spinning the tire violently, yeah. uh, that's not going to allow me to accelerate or decelerate in the fashion that I need to when I'm at the tire's limitation after 150, 160 miles, which is generally what we, uh, what we pit at is about 160 miles. And what do you, what's going on in the pit? You're getting fuel, someone's looking over, possible things that you didn't see wrong with the vehicle? I mean, what's the average 
pit time that you're looking to get minute, less than a minute? Yeah, it's funny, that, uh, as it relates to the Baja 1000, people are like, well, you drive the whole way, is 20 hours driving as fast as you can in the roughest terrain in Baja, do you get a break? And I was telling them, yeah, I got, I got five fuel stops. Yeah. I get to relax, have a sandwich, think about life, all the decisions I've made for 26 seconds and it's back basically. So Sick. Yeah, it's pretty badass. We get uh, 80 gallons of fuel and uh, two rear tires in 26, 27 seconds. All right, yeah, last time we talked, I was getting ready to do mint. Yeah. Now we're, getting, now, we're, now we're stepping in with the big boys. I'm stoked. I'm really, really <laughs> excited. You know, uh, you got a little taste of this, and now you're like, man, I want to do I want it, it all, all the yeah. time. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Um, Especially having somebody that's, you know, uh, involved in a sport. You know, I, I got really good at, at doing the thousand. Yeah. Because, and obviously I'm not saying I'm on any level with you, but uh, back in the day, I trained competitive jiu-jitsu with you know like frank mir joe yeah. stevenson all the old school guys yeah. and for me it was like i got these guys trying to rip my head off four or five days a week and that doesn't intimidate me at all yeah. why would i be scared if somebody's chasing me down in a racetrack and you're gonna you're obviously gonna have that that same mentality where that's an advantage over other competitors because yeah. I, I wasn't fucking scared of anybody yeah, like and obviously guy, you. The guys that are running the race, and like, I can't believe you want to step up and do the pro class. Like, that's, you're running with the best of the best. I said, what the fuck do you think I'm here for? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to just go and paddle. Like, I'm here to, I'm fucking coming with those motherfuckers. They worry about me knocking on They're like, they're fast. I said, how can they drive fast? The cars are the same. It's like NASCAR. They're fucking even. So it just well, comes down to the driving. It's especially, a lot of those guys, they don't understand what it's like to be a finely tuned athlete, right. let alone like you, a fucking world-class athlete. You know exactly how much cognitive ability you have in your mind, because right. you've cut 20 pounds in sure. 10 hours before. Yeah. You know, if any of those other drivers had to cut yeah. six, seven pounds of they'd water, die. They'd, die. Yeah. they'd be begging for Head mercy. hurting. Yeah. Talk to bitch into their wife. Yeah, I'm so they don't they don't know what that's like. You yeah. know, people that have done competitive jujitsu, people that have done MMA or boxers, you know, right. they've they've been in fights, not with somebody else, sure. but on their own to try and maximize their athletic capability. And that's an advantage that you're gonna have over everybody else because right. you're gonna have more batteries. Yeah. I can't fucking wait. I'm caught. I said I'm going. I got the killer instinct. I'm coming with Yeah. You. Yeah. I love it. I love it. like someone on my ass. Like if you, if you and I were to go out there and race, and you're behind me, bump me. I would that that wouldn't intimidate me or get me You'd to be back down. Stoked. stoked. I'm like, right? fuck yeah, I'm like, you are not taking me yeah. down this corner. Yeah. Hell yeah. Whereas other people are like, oh, I'm panicking. You know, I don't. I think. I think there's a lot. Like when we were at the 400, uh -huh. dude, you wouldn't believe how many cur dogs are where we'd run up on them. They'd just get the fuck out of the way. Oh yeah. Yeah, and it's it would, I would just giggle or laugh. Like, yeah. It was like, insane, but. I love it, man. It was so when, you'll you'll get to a point like I don't know if you've already you're already there, but you you'll see guys in your class, and you're like, man, one one day I want to beat go head to head with that guy and embarrass him. Right. And when you get that point, there's, there's nobody I know, but yeah, I'm well, sure. Like, yeah. Sooner or later, you're gonna be like, damn, that that dude can drive. I right. can't believe he can go that fast. Yeah. And then as time progresses and you do your homework and you get your intelligence and you do what's necessary to get ahead right. and you have a competitive pass on that guy it's not going to feel like anything else you've right. ever experienced right all right let's talk about pits real quick mm -hmm. what do i need as far as a solid good pit you got to talk to me like we don't know anything because we don't know anything uh -huh. we went and did the man i did the race in my house now i think i'm a fucking race car driver and we're entering this thing in the in the highest level that i can right now so but we don't know anything about pits, so I need you to break this down to me as you were talking to a little kid saying, all right, cowboy, you're gonna need five pit guys, you're gonna need two gallons of gas, you're gonna need a truck, you're gonna need, you know what I mean? So I need... So let me ask you this, what okay. was your favorite fight of all time that you competed in, win or lose? Probably Razor Rob McCullough back in the WC. Okay, he's a fucking G, I love that right. dude. So, had you just shown up to the party, and knuckled up and said, you know, let's go. And he did the same thing. 
it, it, it would have been like, who knows what the fuck's gonna happen. Right. What helped you? Intelligence. Right. So you gotta talk, you gotta figure out who's got the intelligence. Right. Okay. Which I'm here doing right now. Yeah. So <laughs> now I'm here to tell you that I'm gonna work with you and find out like the golf cart game, you know, the UTV game, the fucking, they've come a long ways and they're going really fast. Right. They're going over a hundred miles an hour. Now. Right. It's not like Yamaha Rhinos right. at 35 mile an hour 15 yeah. years ago. So I've got a lot of knowledge in the off-road world, general knowledge as well as an exceptional level of knowledge in this game. Right. Unlimited production truck, 900 horsepower, 145 mile an hour in the desert. I have access to people that are way smarter than me. Sure. And as it relates to you getting a better angle, sharpening the sword, and being able to be more lethal force on race day. So what I'm going to do... Is there a place that we can go and... Like, I know I can't drive the course. I know that's cheating. Uh -huh. And I know I can't go and you get the pre-run and you're able to do your things there a couple days before. Uh -huh. But I mean, is there a place that you can go and practice um, driving? I would figure out a loop in the desert. Just any desert, just go find it. I would, I would do a three-mile loop and I'd put yourself on the clock, try different things, try things that you think will be... Uh, will not yield as fast of a lap time. See what happens if you go uh, really deep into corners, yes. like as far as like lake breaking into corners, set up and leave. And then, you know, try something where you're into the corner a little bit easier. You, you got to experiment with certain techniques as it relates to especially corner entry right. and exiting corners. Um, and you got to figure out a way to use all of the car. Right. You paid for it, you might as well use every dime of performance you have in it. Right. That's what Larry Raglan, Larry Raglan's list of uh, accomplishments and victories is long and distinguished. Fill yeah. up this whole fucking building full of trophies. But So is breaking a big, is that something that I need to like tell them, hey man, take those breaks, put the best on there. I mean, is that something that, because the, the standard break that come on those buggies probably aren't the ones that we need. I'll tell you one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in motorsports is uh, something in the effect like we're winners, we don't use the brakes. It's yeah. all fucking bullshit. You have to be able to control the energy that you're producing when you're leaving the corner. The more you can control the deceleration, right. the deeper you can go into the corner, which means the longer time you can spend at the speed that you've been able to build to right. the next corner. At the end of the day, you're trying to lengthen your straightaways, leave as hard as you can, and decelerate as hard as you can, rotate and exit the corner efficiently. Brakes are huge. Sick. Huge. I would say brakes are, if, if I could pick between having a 900 horsepower motor and brakes that were okay, or having a, a 750 horsepower motor that was a third the cost and the best brakes, I would pick the best brakes every time. Sure. Yeah, that was one thing that we had said too. Like, man, I think braking is like the most important part because that's what I told Eric. I said, I think this race is done from turn to turn, not on the straight edge. Like, how fast do you leave and enter the next corner? Yes. And that's where. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And that's not, that's not the thing as it relates to real estate. Right. Larry Raglan was my mentor. Um, you know, his list of accomplishments, long and distinguished. He said, what, he was pre running with me. He says, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You know, and I said, what are you talking about? He's like, why aren't you over there? You should be over there. Why are you over here? I was like, well, you know, this is, he's like, listen, how much was entry fee? I says, the entry fee was $3,200 for the Baja 1000. Right. He says, okay, you paid for the whole course. Yeah. Use it. Yeah. That corner does not need to be that sharp. You're making it sharper than it needs to be. And he says, he grabbed the wheel and he says, go over here. This is when I was like 23, 24 years old. But uh, it always pays uh, to learn from other people's experiences if they're willing to share the intelligence. Sure. Intelligence is paramount. Right. Yeah. And then, so Pitts, I need, you need a, what, a guy there to fill you up guy there that knows the vehicle that can help you fix something that's broken I would say four guys four guys in yeah. the pits plus you and your co-pilot somebody that can fab that can keep you going if you if you rip something apart somebody that can stitch it up fab it so that you can continue the race and get a good finish you know who knows anything can happen yeah. I've I've or nothing uh, can happen, or nothing can happen. Right. I won 
Parker 400 in 2010, I had to change an alternator. It took 39 minutes to change the alternator and I won in the middle of torrential downpour by 39 minutes. Right. I was the only one that showed up to the party on the last lap. So anything can happen, especially in desert racing. Yeah. We're putting these vehicles in the harshest, most brutal environment possible and driving them as hard as we can. If you need to go and the juice is worth the squeeze yeah. and you could win, Take the risk. You right. don't have anything to lose. You're not a points lead or anything like that. Right. Fuck it. Um, but at the same time, you got to realize that you're walking 10 miles through the desert at 115 degree heat with a gallon of water. Yeah. So you want to drink all the, all that water in the first mile and then be thirsty for nine miles or right. not make it. That's kind of how you got to look at it as it relates to preserving the life of the vehicle. And Again, this is off-road racing. These things come all the way down to the bone after every race and get completely rebuilt because of all the abuse that they see. So you got to take care of your equipment and win with a, a well-preserved vehicle. If you can preserve your vehicle, you got a better shot. At it. They're blowing ball joints out. Everyone blew ball joints out. They blew thing out. Spindle. Lost their whole tire, dude. Everything. Yeah, out of 15 cars, only four made it. Nice. And we won when we crossed the finish line. We had six minutes and two laps lead. That's so. <laughs> I remember. I remember the phone conversation with you about uh, how to set those, those up and what the best way to set them up was. Yeah. But I'm so glad you called me on that. We had ratchet straps. We were using like. And it yeah. Go out and it just break. And I'm like. Oh yeah. We're doing so. I said. Man, I know a guy. Let me. Let me <laughs> I know a guy. I know a guy. Let me call and see exactly what we need to do. And yeah. uh, it was perfect. Yeah, we just we. Uh, I didn't want. It was rigid as fuck. And I told. Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. But we just did, like you said, um, an inch from stock. Yeah. So just exactly. make it. Yeah. They'll stretch three quarters of an inch. Yeah. You get an inch of play, and that's exactly how you want to set it up. Yeah. You're already at a tremendous advantage because of the fact that you're a world-class athlete and the best in the world, if not the best in the world on your best days, for right. sure. So you know exactly how strong you are, right. which is uh, just the knowledge of knowing how much strength you can exert over an extended period of time, driving sure. as hard as you can in an abusive environment. That in itself is a tremendous advantage over everybody else. Right. And the fact that you're in better shape than everybody else, that's also an advantage. So how'd you get there? You got there through intelligence. Yeah. All the intelligence you can gather, as long as it's not parasitic, all the intelligence you can get, that's just gonna help you go faster in every angle. The point that was the most fun to me was when everyone got there, all the stories of the, all the crap they went through, you know? The night before, the car broke, this broke, that broke, them coming together as a team, decide, like to me, that like bringing everyone together was the whole point of the race. The race was just a byproduct of, so uh, the amount of fun everybody had, it was fucking so cool to me. Dude, that's, that's so exactly cool. what this is all about. Like, I've been on top. I've, right. I've won a bunch of races. I've done really well for myself because I've gotten my education. I learned from people that were smarter than me. Yeah. And also, I've fallen on my fucking face. Yeah. You know, and the times that you've fallen on your face and you've had bad days, three months later, you have a good story to tell yeah. for the rest of your life. And I'm lucky and I'm blessed to be able to say that I have a lot of exciting stories. The, the wins, when you win, you're only that good. You're only on top until your next event. Of course, that's the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. You're only exactly. as good as your last fight, right? Yeah. And then they're like, you could win, you could go win Baja, mm -hmm. or you go loot, win Reno, yeah. and then Baja's next, you lose because you break something, and then everyone's like, oh, you fucking suck, I can't believe, right? You're like, whoa. I could go Whoa. And I'm sure you feel you, you got this, you got the haters as well. Yeah. I could go win the thousand and lose a drag race on Sahara Boulevard in my car and they'd be like, ah, fucking BJ sucks, you know. <laughs> saying that the haters are the haters, man. So a lot of people have a misunderstanding uh, about people that are the best in the world, whatever the fuck it may be. If you're an underwater basket weaver and you won first place, it doesn't matter. People that are the best in the world at anything have figured out how to get there. So they can move to something else as long as they have the passion and the drive. And they can have the opportunity to be the best in the world in that. I knew he was gonna do good. He's, he's a fucking champion, you know? And he's a, a stellar athlete, a very, very intelligent guy. 
I can't say it enough, intelligence wins, intelligence wins races, wins championships. And as long as you can get shit figured out and have an advantage, no matter what the advantage is, if you can get that advantage, you have a better shot at winning. That's probably one of the more difficult things in racing is when you're leading. Yeah, to, to hold the lead. And <clears throat> for me, I call it drown, drowning in champagne because I'm like, you know, I'll have six, seven minute lead against somebody that has no business even yeah. competing with me. It'd be easy to deal with. And it'll be hard for me not to think about like, what am I going to say on the podium? That's three and a half hours away. Just chill out, <laughs> focus on the task, grind it out, get to the finish line. If you don't have a problem, you win. If you do, then, you know, you're going to be pissed off for a few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Like if you could just have a ball joint blow out in the last corner before you come in and like, okay, well, there they go. I'll give you one better. I was leading the 500 about seven years ago against Robbie Gordon, who's arguably one of the best drivers in the sport in the history of all time. And I was beating his ass like he owed me money. <laughs> and a four and a half dollar bolt out of uh, the, the brake where the brake mounts to the tube of the chassis yeah. snapped and I lost, I lost my brakes. And, he drove right past me and it was after i had done the most spectacular pass that i think i've ever done there's a section in baja it's up on like uh, the water where they have stones that are this big yeah and you kind of sink into the stones um and most people go through the like 35 miles an hour i let my temper get the best of me and i dove in there on the fucking chip because i had been behind him for 150 miles trying to pass him yeah. and i was like this is my shot i'm gonna I'm gonna, you know, tattoo the hood of his car with the bottom of my fucking tire, yeah. one way or the other. I value getting around him more than I do winning. So rolled the dice, put my toenail through the firewall, and <laughs> uh, and I got around him. I'll never forget. I heard from his navigator uh, right after that. He's like, dude, that was the craziest thing I've ever seen. There's boulders about the size of microwaves coming bouncing off the hood and getting into his lap, and he's like, dude, I swore you were gonna trip crash but those are the those are the moments that yeah. you hold on to forever so you have any problem with that cowboy no. you have any problem with uh hopping up there on the side to pass nope hell no putting your tire tracks down on no. someone's head <laughs> <laughs> we drove in the mint we drove across somebody sideways i'd have to tire right up across them. <laughs> uh, fuck yeah um juiced man juice this is so fun i never realized how fun I mean, everyone as a kid grows that's all you want to do is race. Mm. Like racing is one thing, but racing like this is totally different. In the vehicle, you'll be able to retain the original engine compression. All this and everything? Yeah. So what is this? So that's a cutting brake. I was actually the first one in the, I gotta brag about this. I was the first one in the, in the off-road game to put a cutting brake in a car. Okay. So how this works is I usually don't need it unless it's a very low speed corner. Mm -hmm. any, any corner that's in excess of 25 miles an hour, I can build enough energy in the springs of the vehicle to get the truck to rotate and line itself up for the next straightaway going to the next corner. Right. So like I said, what we're trying to do is lengthen our straightaways as long as possible um, and keep the car straight so it can accelerate as hard as it right. can to the next obstacle in the next corner. It doesn't accelerate, it doesn't slow down, and it doesn't like to change direction. So how the fuck is it so fast? Right. You know, it, like, it, if you were to go drive this right now, it, it would not feel like it made 900 horsepower. Yeah. Because it's 6,000 pounds, the tires weigh 135 pounds each. So there's a lot of mass that, that sucks up all the power that this engine sure. makes. If it made 500, and you were to go drive it, you'd be like, this is one of the slowest things I've ever driven in my life. <laughs> Just a tank. Yeah, so if I put this race motor in a Corvette, it'd fucking travel through time. I and mean, it'd be so fast that right. you're unmanageable. Right. But you need all that power to turn the tires, especially uh, under a surface that's not like pavement where it's easy to roll a tire down the pavement when you're constantly driving through three and four foot bumps and, and the shocks are taking a lot of uh, the, the forward. Three and energy. four foot bumps. That is insane. Yeah. 100, 110 miles an hour. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Just drinking coffee. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> really, really smooth. That's the next thing uh, that you should do is come with me on a test session. Then I can, yeah. I can give you like an example of how to produce speed right. efficiently. 
and how to enter corners you know, with a great deal of depth and, and right. super late into corners and do it efficiently, safely. How to go into big holes without you know, putting yourself in jeopardy. You just say the, say the word, boss, on there. Yeah, for sure. That'll be our next, our next, our, our next uh, training session. <laughs> be cool. Hell, up. Hell yeah. It's hard for me to get in this side because I never do. I've only gotten in this side like 40 times. I've on that side 2,500 times. It doesn't shift automatically, yeah. but it's, it's out of a manual transmission. Uh, automatic transmission. Out of manual, thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah, good meet you. A lot of good intel though, right? About oh, racing really? and how to raise, what to raise. I can't wait to go drive the fucking truck. <laughs>